Stephen, I, first we want to say thank you so much for your contribution to Open 3D Engine. Um, so the first person interaction toolkit is something that Stephen created for the engine. He is an award-winning game designer, and we are thrilled to have him here. Stephen, please feel free to introduce yourself and get, get started with a walkthrough. Again, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Great. This is the making of the interaction. Actually, I'll just do it in regular mode. Making O3DE, the toolkit from knowing nothing about O3DE to releasing my first open source project within about two-ish weeks. So I already got an introduction, but again, Stephen Harmon, I'm a technical game designer as well as like a virtual production technical designer. I was previously a Unity student ambassador. And so I think it's a pretty small world because I was under Carl Domingo, who was actually one of the ones who worked on the, the third person toolkit. And, and example projects. Such a small world. Didn't even realize that. Hey, um, Carl is awesome. <laughs> yeah, Carl's great. <laughs> I haven't even talked to him afterwards about it. And uh, yeah, so here's some gifts of some of the things I make. I, I make a lot of indie games and uh, big games too. Um, and movies, as you can see with me, a little mocap suit on. So why O3DE? I, I'm sure everyone's pretty aware of the Unity like hiatus or like the like, exodus, such as say. I used to be a long time user of Unity for 10 years taught workshops, colleges, answered forums pretty regularly. And I lost a lot of my trust in pretty much one week of just no transparency about the situation and even just radio silence, which was really unfortunate. And so that I was looking for alternatives. I think everyone was in a panic at the time. And I came across O3DE through this YouTube channel called Games from Scratch, which shows a lot of up and coming tools. Even though he didn't have the best things to say about the engine, I knew it had a lot of potential and I wanted to explore more. And it seemed it had very similar UI to Unreal in terms of the same sort of material system for shaders, as well as the blueprint scripting system with the canvas. And the, even the PhysX was similar to Unity. So it had a lot of things that I was already familiar with to some extent. And I had a lot of adoption and support from big companies. So I, I knew there was a future ahead of it in terms of just longevity. What is the toolkit? It's a template project for first-person adventure games, and I built it on top of Porcupine's Factory's first-person controller gem. It's one of the best things out there right now for the engine, and I really highly recommend you check it out. There's a great YouTube video that they made as well, and they do a lot of cool stuff, including a variety of simple documented script canvas scripts for various interactions. So I wanted this to be as modular as possible and pretty optimized too. Basically, you have your character scripts for extended movement for ladders, trampolines, all sorts of things. And then additionally, you have separate little scripts that are just for each little interaction. And I wanted to get a nice sort of variety of sample interactions that you'd expect to know a walking sim or a horror game or any sort of narrative first person adventure game or puzzle game. Where is the toolkit? It's available on GitHub and itch. There's two places currently where you can download it. I'm going to eventually, when I get the time, I've been busy with some contract work, but remote object support for Open3D, so you can just paste it in. But I haven't gotten there yet. It's just a, it's just a zip, but it's there right now. Why did I make it? I wanted to learn O3DE by doing, and I think the only really way to learn an engine is to like make an example project in it. And so I wanted to test the feasibility of the engine for future projects by creating some common mechanics that I would expect in said projects dog fooding the game, if you will. I wanted also to make this useful for others. So give others well-documented, simple examples of uh, scripting that non-programmers can just get to using and just drag and drop and like duplicate and add to their own objects. And I wanted to make it super customizable so people can just start making games right away. Also, I was unemployed uh, and bored <laughs> and had some free time. I still am fun, fun employed. I do a lot of freelance stuff, but I had time and why not? So here's a little video of it in action. Actually, you know what? Let's just try it out. <laughs> Maybe I can just play it in the maximize window. Hopefully you're all able to see this. But uh, yeah, you can just grab things, rotate them around, toss them. Additionally, you can put it back. Let's see. Here's a light switch. So you can just turn toggle lights on and off. There is doors that kind of open and close based off of what side you're looking at. And uh, it's also physics based. So you can swing through them if it doesn't lock. But if it does lock, Oh, sometimes it's not perfect, but yeah, sometimes it locks. And then live demos, folks, you can read notes. So that's something. There's a teleport pad that sort of adjusts for height if you throw things in it and stuff. There's a trampoline that basically, I guess, mirrors your sort of velocity. And also you can throw things at it again. It's very fun to 
<laughs> All right. Additionally, there is uh, an elevator. Slide. You call the elevator down. And uh, there's a sort of Half-Life 2 ladder systems, basically where you're looking at, it goes up. If you want to go off, you just go back. And, and that's about it. Oh, actually, nope, there's one more last mechanic. So there's the valve. So you can turn it either way and open doors. So yeah, that's about it. It's a pretty simple, <laughs> pretty simple thing. That's not much to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, I guess, the, the toolkit for you. And let me go back to the PowerPoint here. So some challenges I had was, since it is a working project game engine, there was a lot of frequent crashes. I stumbled across some bugs that were specific, like one of them was to do with blend shapes or shape keys, not importing correctly, because I wanted to have a trampoline that was actually animated procedurally, but I couldn't make that work. And it was just crashed the editor. Compared to widely adopted engines, I would say there's not as much documentation, except for in the support forums. I know there is a learn page with the, the get starting resources and videos. But the scripting reference sort of itself is a work of progress. There's a lot more learning curve to be had there. But, uh, and again, please chime in if there's other places that I'm missing. But I did have a lot of help in the support forum. So I'm really glad that exists. So I would say logic is logic. So despite the learning curve and the peculiarities with the engine, I think your knowledge of blueprinting from Unreal or scripting in C Sharp from Unity does carry over as mostly the functions and nodes go by similar names. But not all the nodes that you would expect in script canvas are there. So in some instances, you have to get creative. I know that some of the math functions that I was expecting with quaternions or like local to global space conversions or screen space, just like all those sort of functions that I didn't find in the scripting canvas. You kind of had to get a little creative with that. Takeaways, uh, I think O3D is production ready for personal projects. I wouldn't necessarily trust myself to, to use it for a commercial thing with tight turnarounds, but I'm going to try to use it for my next game, Zodo. It's like a personal passage, passion project. I'm adapting a immersive theater show into a game. So that's going to be a fun experience. And here's some art on the side. But anyone can really learn the basics of a new engine in a about a month. So when you've learned one, you learn them all. Uh, and it really isn't as difficult as you think to port over the, your work. I was really worried, and uh, I think a lot of people are. But it is really exciting to be a beginner again. And you don't realize how fast you pick things up. And the event-driven architecture and modularity of the of O3D specifically is the future. I think it's great. I think it is a double-edged sword. I know some people hate the gem system. Other people love it. But I, I think it really does help you use only what you need and keep your project really lightweight and clean. And there's constantly new gems and plugins popping up constantly over the discourse. It's never been easier, to, in my opinion, to have game objects, actors, entities, whatever you want to call them, talk to one another. I think the EBA system and all that is just really well-made. And yeah, I guess I just want to end with some kudos and thanks, shout outs. This would not be possible at all if it weren't for the general help, generous help and advising from Eric Kuzmenko and Nana Yellen. They're the creators of the O3D uh, first person controller gem. And uh, I also want to shout out Kepler Codes and AJ, the one abyss, for answering some of my noob questions when I first started using the engine. And also just extra shout out to Eric for showcasing it in action on the Steam Deck. Here's a little video of that. It's really neat to see my projects being used uh, you know, by someone else other than me. So it's really cool to see it in action, especially on a piece of hardware that I don't even own, which is cool. Here, here it is <laughs> on a small handheld form factor. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that. If any, anyone has any questions, let me just make this a little bit bigger so I can see the chat as well. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Just shout them out or if we have time, I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. We we'll definitely open the floor up for questions and answers right now. I want to say this is amazingly awesome. So thank you for putting this together, Stephen. I just wanted to say that I liked the presentation, Stephen. I think the toolkit looks very cool. Oh, thanks for coming, Alex. It's good to see you here. <laughs> yeah, no problem.